On today's two on your side town hall, a lot of passionate debate over the past day about the vaccine mandate for bills and Sabres games. Now the legal argument. Plus, parents have a lot of questions about kids and COVID. We're going to be talking one on one with the president of the largest group of pediatricians in America to get some answers on vaccines, masks and more. Plus, you know, last month was a hot one. It turns out the extra heat here outpaced pretty much every other city in the country. According to a new report, Heather Waldman will help us make sense of that. We're glad you're here with us today, everybody. First up, the vaccine mandate announced by Erie County and Pagula Sports and Entertainment yesterday. We want to dig into part of the debate that we haven't talked about much just yet, the potential for a legal challenge. So by now you've heard starting later this month, fans will have to be vaccinated in order to attend events at Highmark Stadium, home of the Bills, or KeyBank Center, home of the Sabres, plus concerts and other shows there. A very astute viewer pointed this out to us. The Bills and Sabres saying that they're doing this, quote, in compliance with the Erie County Department of Health's directive. Legal analysts have previously told us when it comes to all of these health mandates, they're easier to challenge legally if they're being forced by governments instead of private businesses. So is that the case here? Might we see this end up in court? Well, we talked today with Leslie Silva, a partner at Tully Rinky Law Firm. The bills are a privately held business. Um, they can make decisions on their own. They, depending on how many employees they have, they might be subject to the federal regulations that have come down. Um, but if they're working in conjunction with the Department of Health, that is a sign that they are really looking to reduce any liability that they could have in the future. I'm not sure who would challenge it. Um, I don't think the fans have any standing. You simply just don't go to the game if you don't like the rules. Uh, but if uh, an employee has a challenge, I mean, that would have to do with, uh, you know, whatever their guidelines and restrictions are for their own employees. Um, and then maybe there could be a challenge there. Yes, yeah, standing would be necessary, and she believes that fans wouldn't have that. Silva says technically the Bills could actually challenge the mandate if maybe they disagree with it, but since the team made the announcement in conjunction with the county yesterday, that seems highly unlikely. We'll keep you posted, though, as this debate continues. So in terms of the COVID pandemic that stretches back now more than a year and a half, you may have seen this really troubling headline today. When you add it all up, one in every 500 Americans has now died from COVID-19. That's because the death toll is heading pretty close to 700,000 people just in this country. Thankfully, we have not seen children die at rates anywhere close to adults, but we are seeing a surge in cases among kids just as school is back in session. And of course, now you have the big vaccine debate with children. Earlier today, I had the chance to talk with Dr. Lee Savio Beers. She is president of the American Academy of Pediatrics. Doctor, it's great to get to talk with you. Unfortunately, we've seen this surge in COVID cases among children. We always keep track of your group's weekly report that you put out, and the most recent one shows almost a quarter million new confirmed cases among kids in just a week's time and children now make up a much higher percentage of cases than during our previous surges. What is behind this? Yeah, I think there's a couple things behind this this change and, and I agree it really concerns us as pediatricians as well. I think the first thing we you know we've all been talking about this for for all of us the Delta variant is much more contagious and transmissible and so it, it spreads faster through through communities. I think the second piece is really remembering that um, you know our children our little ones under the age of 12 aren't yet authorized for a vaccine and so so we know that that our little ones are really vulnerable to getting infected with COVID-19 in a way that, that our adolescents and adults are not. We're also seeing that, that even for our adolescents, ages 12 and up, who are eligible to be vaccinated, um, only about half of them have been. And so we still have lots and lots of teenagers who aren't vaccinated. And when you, you know, you kind of compare this to our older population where we may have higher rates of vaccine, that, that tells us that we've got, you know, we've just got more kids who, who are, are susceptible to to COVID-19 vaccine or to, to COVID-19 infection. 
Yeah, I want to ask you about vaccines for kids. And before we talk about kids 12 and under who, as you mentioned, aren't yet eligible, I wonder what you would say to parents of children 12 and up who maybe haven't gotten vaccinated yet, perhaps because they think, you know, the younger you are, the more likely you are to survive COVID, not end up in the hospital, maybe not even get sick. For parents who say that it's just not that serious for kids, why bother? What would be your message? First, I would say, you know, first is very, very normal and natural and, and absolutely as a parent, you should be asking these questions. That's your job to, to make sure you understand the health decisions you're making for your kids. I think the second piece is that this is a very safe and effective vaccine. I have two teenagers at home. They've both been vaccinated. Um, you know, it's a very safe and effective vaccine. And, and so I think parents should feel reassured by that. You know, and I think the last piece is, is yes, absolutely. Kids are less likely to have severe illness than adults. And that is a great thing. Um, but it doesn't mean that they can't get seriously ill. As you mentioned, over a quarter of a million kids were di almost a quarter of a million kids were diagnosed with covid in the last week. And what that means is that is that probably several thousand of those kids are going to end up in the hospital based on what we know of 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 complication rates. And so it, as a parent, for me, I want to make sure that I am I'm taking every measure I can that's safe and effective to prevent my children from potentially getting a serious illness. There are reports that the vaccine may be approved for children under the age of 12 as early as next month. What do you expect on that front? And again, what will be your message to parents of kids in that age group? Yeah, this is the most common question I'm getting from parents these days and friends and neighbors. We, I, you know, I think I think I think all of us, uh, parents and pediatricians, are eager for a, a safe and effective vaccine for for our younger ones. Um, you know, what we're hearing, we're hearing really promising things actually that the vaccine may be available for for at least kids over five um, by Halloween potentially even um, or perhaps as late as early next year. Increasingly, we're, we're hearing we're hearing promising things that it might be on the earlier end of that. And, and I think that's what we're all hopeful for. You know, and I would say in the meantime, what I would say to parents is, you know, again, just, just remembering we know what we can do. There are things we can do to help keep our kids safe. Um, one of the things is making sure that as much as we can, all the, the adolescents and adults around them are vaccinated because if, if they're vaccinated, they're less likely to spread COVID to the little ones. I think the other thing is remembering, um, you know, continuing on with the mask wearing especially in schools or in crowded indoor situations um, that does really decrease the spread of COVID-19 and can help keep our little ones safe. You know, good hand washing, all those things that we've been doing all along could continue to work and will continue to protect our little ones until we have a vaccine for them. Finally, we have this ongoing debate right now about masks in school. You mentioned that uh, people who are opposed arguing again that kids don't typically get very sick. Some people even say that they don't think masks work. What does the science tell us about the need for masks in school? And if you were, say, the governor of New York, would you mandate that masks are worn in schools by both children and staff and teachers? Yeah, you know, so first, the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends universal mask wearing for for children and adults in school settings, um, and that is for a couple reasons. First of all, you know, we we know, we know there's really good evidence about this and increasing evidence that masks are are safe. Um, they're not 100 percent. Nothing is 100 percent, but they do pretty significantly decrease the spread of COVID within schools, and especially if everybody's wearing them. Um, this is one of those things that it doesn't just protect you, it protects those around you. So it's going to work the best when, when everybody's doing it. Um, so, so that, that is, is, you know, another sort of really um, important piece of this. And, and when it comes to sort of why, why, why should we wear, you know, I, again, I go back to thinking about, you know, COVID, you know, children thankfully are less likely to have severe illness than adults from COVID-19, but they can get very sick. And, and I think it's important for us to take whatever simple, safe and effective measures that we can take to help help keep our kids safe. Um, you know, it's it's a tragedy anytime a child gets gets you know seriously ill, and especially if there are things that we can do that are simple, safe, and effective to prevent that. And universal mask wearing in schools is is one of those things. And if we're doing that, then we can make sure our kids stay in school. We can make sure they're getting all the things they need. You know, they need so much right now. And 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 you know, vaccinating kids who are eligible and wearing masks universally in school is one of the ways we can keep our kids there and so that we can be doing all the things that, that they need from us. 
Dr. Lee Savio Beers, president of the American Academy of Pediatrics. Really appreciate you taking the time to talk with us. Great, thank you.